Zero in on your life's objective. To truly reclaim your life by focusing on living in the moment, you have to have a destination. Remember, the ability to live in the present moment is just a tool. It's just a practice that you use to achieve some sort of objective. Don't confuse the two. A lot of people think that if you practice mindfulness, meditation, or engage in any sort of activity that helps you fully utilize the moment, then you are living life to the fullest. That's not true. You still have to have objectives, goals, and a destination. With that said, knowing the power of living in the moment makes the process so much more meaningful. Instead of just simply chasing your tail and ending up this mental fog, every moment feels like an adventure. It feels that you're doing something with your life. It feels that you were put on this earth for a reason. That's a very empowering feeling. It is like the 180 degree opposite of feeling stuck, feeling like another face in the crowd, or feeling like your life really has no meaning. The moment that you start thinking that your life has no meaning or purpose, it becomes very easy to imagine life without you. In other words, it's easy to think that you are an accident or whether you live or die doesn't really matter because you're really not making that much of an impact. You see the rabbit hole that you fall into once you start that line of thinking. The mental self-reclamation blueprint that you're following starts with the most important part. It answers the question why. The problem with life is that a lot of people are focused on answering what, when, and how. Don't get me wrong, these are important questions to ask, but they have to lead somewhere. They're preliminary questions. They're not the final question. The final question is why. This is all about understanding your understanding of the meaning of life. I know that's kind of a funky sentence, but that's the best we can do. At the end of the day, life is our understanding of what life is about. It's not like you can look into the purest form of reality of life. Again, this is not mysticism. This is not a religion. Instead, this is practical psychology. What we're looking at is your perception or your read of the ultimate objective of your life. Now, this might seem like a tall order at this point, and I would agree with you. It's like trying to unravel a thick ball of yarn in one step. It usually doesn't work that way. You have to slowly unwind that ball, and this is where the following process comes in. Take a mental inventory. At any given second, what are you thinking about? What are you worried about? What do you obsess over? What do you focus on? Write all this down and record the first thing that comes to your mind. There are no right or wrong answers. What's important is you just write down everything that comes to your mind. Get it in writing. Do you see a pattern? Do you focus primarily on process instead of objectives or vice versa? Do you focus on timelines instead of the things you're supposed to do? Again, there's no right or wrong answer. I just want you to be aware of the things and concerns that you carry around in your mind every single moment. When you do a mental inventory, it's as if you brush the fur of your dog. Throughout the day, your dog will pick up certain debris from your yard, from your carpet, from any interior space of your home. But when you brush the fur of your dog, or your cat for that matter, it ends up with a fresh coat. It ends up clean. The same applies to your mind. If you don't do a mental inventory, you'd be surprised as to how cluttered, clogged, and overburdened your mind gets. It's as if you're living your life day to day and you're picking up all these worries, concerns, and anxieties and you are the last person to know. Take a focus inventory. Your mental inventory is kind of a broad survey of what you stuff into your mind. The next step is to drill a little deeper. We're going to be a little bit more particular. In this step, we're going to look at what you devote your focus on. In any given second, where does your focus mostly go? Are you focused on things that happened in the past, or are you worrying about things that have yet to happen? Are you focused on the tasks immediately ahead of you? Do you spend a lot of time thinking about whether you've forgotten something or not? Do you feel anxious about forgetting something or not doing something that you're supposed to be doing? Again, there's no right or wrong answer here. There's no one-size-fits-all solution. Just write down what you spend your focus on. It's important to note that different people focus on different things. People, after all, have different priorities. We have different values. We come from different backgrounds. We also have different experiences. Take a life inventory. For some people, this is going to get a little bit uncomfortable. For this stage, I want you to write down what you think you've achieved with your life. It doesn't matter whether you're 20 years old, 40 years old, or 80 years old. It doesn't matter whether you have a degree, you dropped out of high school, you have a couple of million dollars to your name. Just write down what you think that you have achieved in your life. It doesn't have to presently exist. Maybe it's an experience that you had. Maybe one of your greatest personal achievements was you visited Rome, Italy, or Paris, France. Write that down. Whatever you think you have achieved, list it. Again, 
This should be a stream of consciousness exercise, so don't edit yourself. Don't think that an answer is stupid or doesn't have a place on your list. Just write down whatever comes to mind. If it feels like it answers the question, list it down. What truly matters? Now, at this point, you're going to do some sorting. You understand that your life has an objective. That is, after all, the first step of this process. With your objective firmly in mind, look at your mental inventory list, your focus inventory sheet, and your life inventory tally. Go through all those listings with your life's objective in mind. Always refer back to your ultimate objective as you go through these materials. Get comfortable with the objective as your primary frame of reference. Use that razor. Now, here comes the tough part. Look at all your different lists and then start scratching out items that do not lead to your grand objective. Your plan is simple. Either it leads you to the objective or you lose it. In other words, on all the lists that you have set up, cut out things that are obviously not going to lead you to your objective. This is your goal, because if you were to do this, you practice personal clarity where everything in your life leads to one place and one place alone. I remember the first time I did this. It was really quite eye-opening. If anything, it made me realize that a lot of the things I was working for, a lot of things I spent a tremendous amount of emotional, financial and physical resources on were pointless. It's like being assigned a big project at work and you spend most of your time checking your Facebook updates, your Instagram feed, and your emails. Don't get me wrong. At some level or other, those tasks are important. But ultimately, you're not going to keep your job depending on how well you answer your email. You're not going to get a raise because you are very prompt in checking up on your Facebook notifications. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Focus on what's important. Focus on what you are here for. In other words, zero in on your life's objective and make sure your mental inventory, your focus inventory, and your life inventory line up to grand objective. If you were to do this, you'd start living a life of meaning, direction, and purpose.